Hello everybody. How all are you boys and girls both at home and in our new kids church venue? I hope you're all well. Well, you know what I did last week? I fell off my bike and I broke my arm. Now, have any of you ever broken anything? Who do you have to go to if you break an arm? The doctor, that's right. I had to go and get a cast from Uncle Pete and, um, and I had to go to the doctor who's good at bo fixing bones. And if you have a problem with your bike, who do you have to go to? Yeah, you need to go to a good bike mechanic to sort out your bike. And what about if you break other things? Like what happens if you tear your pants and they've got a hole in them? Or if you want to make something out of material, who are you going to need to go to? Someone else, hey? You're going to need to go to someone who is good at sewing, who's a seamstress. And then what about if your pipes in your house break and you need something's leaking in your toilet or one of your taps leaking, then you're going to need someone who's good at fixing pipes, hey, like a plumber. And what about if you need to fix something wooden or you want to make something wooden, then who do you need? Yeah, you need a carpenter, hey. And what about if something metal was broken? So you needed to fix something metal, or you needed something welded or bent. You need someone who is good at that sort of thing, welding and metal work and everything. Now, do any of you know anybody who could fix all these things, all these things that are broken? Is there anyone that can help you with all your problems? Well, I can tell you there is someone that you know. And we in the Pudu household are really lucky because we get to live with him. And we call Uncle Al the fix it up chappy because he fixes everything. Do you know that not only can he do carpentry and metal work and he's the best bike mechanic around and he fixes anything that's broken like the fridge. He can also sew and he's a doctor and can fix bones. How cool is that? Today's true story from the Bible is also about a man who was good at fixing things. And this man um, was sent by God to help out his fa faithful people with many different problems. His name was Elisha, and you can read about him in 2 Kings. And we're going to spend the next six weeks at Kids Church learning about him. I want you to listen carefully to the story and see if you can see how he was able to help God's people and also what happened to those who mocked or rejected him. Do you remember last week when we heard about when God had taken Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind after they were separated by a chariot of fire? Elisha had then picked up Elijah's cloak and he struck the Jordan River with it and the river parted and he crossed over just like Joshua had done. He then went to Jericho, which had been rebuilt after God had destroyed it at the time of Joshua. It had been rebuilt, but the city was cursed. The water for the city from the spring was bad and caused sickness, and the land didn't grow crops and fruit. The men of Jericho came to Elisha, asking for his help. He told them to bring a new bowl and put salt in it. Elisha then threw the salt into the spring. He said, this is what the Lord says, I have healed this water. No longer will death and unfruitfulness come from it. And the spring became healthy until today. A while later, there was drought and famine in the land and the prophets were meeting with him. Elisha told his servant to make a large pot of stew for the prophets. So the servant went out into the field to get some herbs for cooking with, and he found a wild vine that had wild gourds on it. Now this is what wild gourds looked like, and he thought they looked good to eat, but actually they're poisonous. Anyway, he picked as many as he could to carry in his clothes because they looked so good, and when he came back, he cut them up 
and put them into the pot of stew. He didn't know they were poisonous, and when the stew was given to some of the men to eat, it tasted bitter, and they thought they were going to die. Then Elisha threw some flour in the pot, and a miracle happened, and there was nothing bad in the stew. Then a man came along to Elisha with a sack full of 20 loaves of small bread. Elisha told his servant to give it to the hundreds of men who were there. The servant thought that there wasn't nearly enough bread to feed all the people and that Elisha was crazy. But Elisha prayed and the Lord multiplied the bread so that they all ate and there were some left over just as the Lord promised. Another time, the sons of the prophets asked Elijah to go with them to the Jordan so that they could each get a log so that they could build themselves a place to live there. He agreed, and they went down to the Jordan. They started to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head, whee, plop, fell into the water. And he cried out, Oh no, master, it was borrowed, and it is so expensive. Elisha asked him where in the river it had fallen. Then Elisha cut a piece of wood, threw it in there, and it made the iron float. Then he told the man to pick it up, and the man reached out and took it. Wow! God is really performing miracles through Elisha, isn't he? He's fixing all sorts of problems. In the next five weeks, we are going to learn about lots more miracles that Elisha performed. If one of us throws salt into a spring, it wouldn't make the water healthy, would it? Can flour take away poison? I don't think so. What about making iron float? That sounds impossible for a man. All these things show that Elisha was really the man that God was with. He was definitely the man God chose to help Israel at that time. Sometimes the problem was serious, like poison, and other times it was just something that was lost, like the axe head. But whatever the problem, God helped his people through Elisha. Who else performed many miracles on earth? Hmm. Oh yeah, I heard you all say Jesus. What miracle can you think of that turned water into something else? That's right. The first miracle of Jesus at the wedding, turning water into wine. Can you remember Jesus doing something with five loaves and two fish to feed lots of people? Yes, he fed 5,000. That's more than Elisha fed. And then who was sinking like an axe head and Jesus came and lifted him out of the water? Yes, that's the story of Peter. But did all the people accept Jesus as God's son? Did they accept that Jesus was the one that God had sent? No. And actually, there were also those in Elisha's time who didn't accept him as a man of God. When Elisha was walking up to Bethel, some boys came out of the city and jeered at him. They chanted, go up, baldy, go up, baldy. Elisha turned around, looked at them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and injured 42 of the children. Yikes, not a good idea to reject Elijah. What will happen to everyone who mocks or rejects Jesus? We've been learning in Revelation about the judgment that is coming one day to the world for those who ignore or reject Jesus. But for now, he is patient with us because he wants everyone to know and trust in him so that they can be saved. Well, Jesus is even better than Elisha. Elisha helped the people that were faithful to God at the time he lived. But Jesus not only 
help many people with all kinds of problems when he was on earth. But ultimately, he came to help all of us through his death and resurrection. And Jesus still helps us today. And he encourages us to pray to God about all our problems, all the things we can't fix on our own. He will give us everything we need. Not always everything we want, but everything we need. Do you see how amazing Jesus is? How should we treat him? Remember how those boys from Gilgal treated Elisha and what happened to them? Can you remember how the crowds around the cross treated Jesus? Let's rather love and accept Jesus as our rescuer and saviour and follow him. Today's memory verse is Psalm 121 verse 1 to 2. Let's practice it together and then you can teach it to your parents if they don't already know it. I lift my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121 verses 1 to 2. I should do that again. Psalm 121 verses 1 to 2. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And if you say it to me, next time you see me, maybe I'll have something for you. Okay, should we pray? Thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus to save us and to take the judgment we deserve. Thank you that you know Jesus is the one you chose to do this because of all the wonderful things he did, and especially because he died and rose again to life. I'm sorry for the way I have sometimes treated Jesus and for all the ways I ignore you. Please help me to love Jesus as I should, and thank you that you rescued me. Amen. We'll see you all soon.